Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a zombie horror film, Flight of the Living Dead. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. A commercial flight makes its way through some stormy conditions while the flight attendant serve their passengers on board. The flight is traveling from Los Angeles to Paris, so the flight attendants discuss how they are going to enjoy themselves once they land. Meanwhile, the two pilot fellows, Pilot Junior and Pilot Senior, talk about a special package in the cargo zone of the plane. They mention that the package is a top-secret government operation because it is being guarded by an armed guard wearing a hazmat suit. They also mention two scientists in the first-class section who are directly spearheading this government operation. These scientists are currently having an argument because one of them, named Hubby, is upset about the way his wife has been used in an experiment. However, their boss, Leo, interrupts the scientists and tells Hubby that he should be grateful because his wife is still alive thanks to the experiment. However, Hubby doesn't take too kindly to Leo's words and walks away out of frustration. Now, a cop is seen with a prisoner who is in handcuffs. A flight attendant named Megan asks prisoner if he wants anything, but he requests some alcohol inside his coke, but not his cock. Megan acts shy, so prisoner tries to flirt her hormones, but the cop tells him to shut up his flirting mouth. Meanwhile, another flight attendant named Blondie enters the cockpit, and Pilot Jr. finds her body very attractive. Pilot Jr. tries to seduce Blondie with his young muscles, but she asks him to calm down and focus on the plane. She looks at the weather and gets worried by what she sees, but both the pilots reassure her that it's nothing serious. Now, a couple of football bras fool around with each other and pass a football in the middle of the plane. Their girlfriends don't appreciate their rolling balls, and then a flight attendant stops the madness by snatching the ball from them. The buddies want it back, but the attendant says she'll return the ball once she's done playing with it. Elsewhere, a superstar golfer gives an autograph to a fan, but it makes his wife upset because she doesn't like his celebrity status. Her jealousy triggers an argument, especially after Blondie flirts with golfer for a bit. The weather grows worse, so the pilots get to work and instruct the passengers to fasten their seatbelts. The flight attendants also get seated, and the turbulence gets really rough even for the pilots. This is bad news as the boxes move around in the cargo zone of the plane. A couple of boxes smash against the hazmat guard, and he ends up injuring his leg. Now the FBI and some generals discuss Leo as a person of interest, because he is rumored to be making a new strain of the malaria virus. It turns out, Leo was working on making this virus to be able to revive dead organs. However, he ended up mutating the strain, and it led to the virus not just reviving organs, but also the human body. Back to the flight, the secret package lid falls off, and Hubby's experimental wife breaks out of it. She seems to be normal at first, but then she starts to panic, because she doesn't know how she got into an airplane. She thinks back to some horrible memories, and feels a thumping pain in her head. The hazmat guard senses imminent danger, so blindly shoots at the experimental wife. She manages to dodge his bullets with her sexy body, but this ends up damaging some of the airplane's cargo. The experimental wife wants answers, and asks the hazmat guard to show some hormone mercy to her, so that she can figure out what's going on. The hazmat guard seemingly agrees to her flirting demands, but this just turns out to be a lie because he shoots her the moment she comes out of hiding. The guard thinks he's taken care of the situation, but panics when he can't find the body. It turns out, Hubby's experimental wife has transformed into a bloodthirsty zombie, and she brutally attacks the hazmat guard without zombified mercy. Meanwhile, one of the football bras peeps at a flight attendant's curvy body, but he gets scolded by his girlfriend for being weird. She doesn't like her boyfriend's behavior, so she decides to punish him by hooking up with his bro in the washroom. A muscular man named Paul seemingly stalks Megan and asks her to be careful, but she thinks he's just being creepy with her, so she asks him to go back to the seat. Prisoner and the cop continue to quarrel with each other, and this time, Prisoner makes fun of the cop's suit, even though he has a court case to worry about. The turbulence starts to get worse, and this leads to all the cabin luggage falling out of place. Some of the passengers get injured and start to panic, so the pilots decide to lower the plane's altitude in order to reduce the chaos. The flight is a complete mess, so the flight attendants are told to take care of the injured passengers immediately. Pilot Jr. is told to check the cargo area along with the scientists. Meanwhile, the girls start fighting with each other, and the flight attendant has to calm them down. Hubby has a bad feeling about what is going to happen, but Leo tells him to chill. Regardless, Hubby decides to check the cargo with Pilot Jr., so Leo tells the other scientist to join them as well. Now Prisoner tells the cop that he wants to use the washroom, but the cop tells him to stay seated for now. However, Prisoner doesn't give in so easily and threatens to wet his seat. 
The cop decides to entertain prisoner's demands, but the turbulence causes him to bang his head against the cabin. The cop faints, and prisoner sees this as a chance to escape. Megan wakes up the cop a little later, and he quickly realizes that prisoner has gotten out of his handcuffs. Now, Pilot Jr. checks the cargo with the scientists, but they meet the two deadly zombies waiting for them. The zombie wife feasts on hubby and his smelly part, while the hazmat zombie kills the other scientist. Pilot Jr. is shocked to see this, so he escapes the cargo immediately. The cheating couple decides to go for another round, but the football bro vanishes for a bit, so the cheating girlfriend is unable to find him. She looks around for him and suddenly gets scared when he pranks her. The couple fools around for a bit, but then the flight attendant asks them to go back to their seats. It turns out, prisoner is right there, but is keeping himself hidden from the cop's view. Pilot Jr. comes out of the cargo hold and scolds Leo for bringing monsters on board the plane. Pilot Jr. rushes back to the cockpit and locks himself in with Pilot Sr. after revealing to him what he just saw. The pilots immediately call up Paul, who is actually shown to be an undercover agent working for the TSA. The cop and Megan try to look for prisoner, but are unable to find him. Megan uses this chance to flirt with the cop, but he ignores her hormones and tells her that prisoner is a con artist instead. The turbulence hits the plane again, so Megan bumps into the cop and enjoys his fatherly muscles. Paul decides that he's had enough, so he confronts Leo for more information, but Leo says that it's none of his business. Since Leo is not being cooperative with him, Paul joins the cop and offers to help him find Prisoner, who is currently a prime suspect. The two of them drop into the cargo hold to look for some clues and find a lot of blood. The cop fairly suspects that this could be the work of Prisoner, so he and Paul decide to split up for now. Paul enters the vents, hoping to locate his target, but he suddenly runs into a deadly zombie that growls at him. Paul acts fast and shoots the zombie, but it doesn't die and drops down next to the cop. The zombie attacks the cop, and a struggle ensues, so Paul tries to help his teammate with a gun. However, the bullet goes through the plane's layers and kills one of the flight attendants on top. This causes the cheater girl to go puke in the washroom immediately. Blondie decides to alert the pilots about this, but she is almost instantly attacked by a zombie. Pilot Jr. decides to go out of the cockpit to help everyone. He manages to drive away the zombies for now, but it's too late for Blondie, who has succumbed to her injuries. It gets worse when the cheater girl is attacked by a zombie and killed from behind the washroom mirror. Some of the passengers break into the washroom and try to save her, but they only end up getting bitten by more zombies. Megan has no idea what to do, so she asks Pilot Sr. for advice, but he simply tells her to restore order and get the passengers back to their seats. Megan sits next to her friend, but does not realize that the friend has also been bitten. Suddenly, Blondie turns into a zombie and takes a bite on Pilot Jr.'s neck rather than his smelly ass. The zombie starts attacking everyone else as well, so Leo finally admits that he made a mistake. Leo runs to the cockpit, hoping to be saved, but Pilot Sr. doesn't open the door for him. Megan tries to check up on the other passengers, but it's of no use as zombies start to take over the plane. The turbulence only gets worse, so Volfer tries to find answers. He asks Leo what's going on, but Leo only says that they need to leave this plane as soon as possible. There's no time to rest as Blondie Zombie shows up and attacks them. Luckily, Golfer smashes her face with his golf club, and she falls to the ground. Now Paul and the cops show up at the scene and start shooting the zombies. Their bullets aren't enough though, as all the human passengers are attacked and bitten by zombies all over the plane. Megan's friend also completes her transformation and is about to bite Megan, but Prisoner magically appears and saves her by using a fire extinguisher to kill the zombie. Meanwhile, the FBI and the generals have a discussion regarding the zombie flight. They realize that the malaria virus strain that Leo has created is actually a serum transfer virus. It was used in the army to make dead soldiers fight, even after being killed. The generals conclude that the flight has been infected beyond repair, and the only way out of a global apocalypse is to destroy the jet before it reaches a populated area. Now a nun tries to save one of the passengers, but it's of no use because she also gets trapped. Prisoner and Megan try to save the nun, but the zombies tear her legs apart, causing her to die from instant shock. The golfer takes his wife, Leo, and another woman through a vent, and he wants to know why Leo would create such a horrible virus. However, Leo replies that he is just following orders. The zombies become worse, and they easily outnumber the human passengers by converting them one at a time. Pilot Jr. bangs on the cockpit door and convinces Pilot Sr. to let him in. Unfortunately, this was a big mistake because Pilot Jr. turns into a zombie and kills Pilot Sr. without hesitation. Now Paul and the cop use up whatever ammunition they have to kill the zombie army. In the middle of this, they run into Prisoner and Megan as well. 
The team doesn't have time to make a plan because they are outnumbered by the zombies. They try to pile up some luggage so that they can create a barrier against the zombies. Unfortunately, the extra woman in golfer's team falls off the vent straight into the zombie pit. She is eaten and taken away, making golfer's wife panic. Paul and the cop are running out of bullets, so they try to come up with a plan, but prisoner acts stupid and rips out some cables on an impulse. The turbulence strikes even harder, so Leo falls into the cargo zone, but gets killed by the zombies over there. Now, golfer and his wife are united with the team, and then, Megan tries to contact the pilots, but to no avail as both of them are dead. The team needs to land the plane, and they are in luck, because Prisoner had some flying experience. But for that, the team needs more ammo to get to the cockpit. That's when the cop remembers that there's an automatic gun in the cargo zone downstairs. Megan appreciates the cop's sweating body smell, as he creates a makeshift bomb with whatever is available. He drops the bomb into the cargo zone, and kills all the zombies. This gives the cop a chance to go down and retrieve the rifle. He loads himself up with the rifle, and uses it to kill some zombies. The cop makes it back to the team after escaping a few more zombies, but there are only three minutes left for them to be bombed. The team sees the jet and realize that they must respond to the radio communications in the cockpit to let the army pilot know they're still alive. They get to work and start shooting through the zombies blocking their way. However, Golfer and his wife are bitten in the process. They decide to hold off the zombies and let the others go through so that they can die together. Leo shows up as a zombie and things are looking bad, so Golfer opens up the emergency exit. This causes him, his wife, and the zombies to get sucked out of the plane. While entering the cockpit, Prisoner is bitten by a grandma zombie. Luckily, the grandma can't bite him without teeth, but can only taunt massage him. Prisoner overcomes his fear and tries to talk to the army pilot, but to no success, and the pilot fires the missile at them. The airplane takes a small hit, which causes a zombie passenger to get sucked out of it. This zombie ends up crashing into the fighter jet, thus causing an explosion. Prisoner and the cop eventually manage to pull up the airplane, but they get distracted by the zombified pilot senior and have to kill him. This forces Prisoner and the cop to crash land the airplane, but they manage to survive the dangerous landing. Prisoner, the cop, Megan, and Paul walk away from the debris, but it turns out the zombies have also survived the crash. The movie ends with these zombies also walking toward human civilization. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.